What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another YouTube video, taking a journey through the dark web. Now, before we dive in, I have to give the obligatory disclaimer. Hey, this is an artistic, scientific, and educational documentary, and it's all totally for education purposes, education's sake. Uh, we're here to learn, we're here to explore, and just kind of shine the spotlight on what anyone could very well access and go take a gander at if they had the know-how or the stomach for it or anything along that. So I'm not making any promise not making any, you know, uh, assertions or proclamations as what is what. This is all just for showcasing. Uh, in the last video, we got started with Tails. We got Tails Linux created, uh, spun up inside of a virtual machine. We downloaded the ISO and we were taking a look at the Tor browser, which we're using Tor so we can take advantage of that onion router network, right? How we bebop around different routers and we have sort of a proxy and, and uh, at least there's an extra element of confidentiality, security, and privacy, and what we're going to end up browsing, what we're going to end up doing. And we can access those Tor hidden services or websites showcased with a dot onion top level domain. Now, uh, here's the thing. If we're going to poke around and we've got Tor and we're accessing Tor hidden services, how do we find stuff? <laughs> how do we go look and see what is intentionally hidden, right? Uh, how do we know what we're looking for, etc.? Now, there are these things, search engines, right? The same way you use Google if you're, I don't know, you use Bing or whatever. If you're using DuckDuckGo, uh, DuckDuckGo is set up as the default search engine for Tor and Tails, what we're doing here in the Tor browser. Now, before we dive in, I want to take one extra security step, one extra security uh, check here. Over in the top right-hand side of our Tor browser, I want to go into the preferences so I can make sure that, yep, Tor is or should be our default browser. Let's set that up just in case we end up doing anything wonky. And I'm going to scroll through here in case there's anything specific that we might need. Looks like we have the Amnesia user on our Linux Tails distribution. We have a Tor browser folder, and we could just basically ask where to save files if we were to download anything. We could update, etc. if we needed to, but I really want to get into the privacy and security section where we're going to prioritize Onion sites when known. Uh, I've seen in some locations, if you go to a website and there is an Onion rendition of that website available, hey, it could bring you to that. You might get a little pop-up and notification in your Tor browser that that is an option. We can make that always or every time. I'm fine with it being every time right now if, we, if it asks and just checks with us. But obviously we're in permanent private browsing mode, so we won't have cookies and site data stored and it'll always be deleted uh, logins and passwords. Hopefully we're not going to end up doing a whole lot of authentication and login and password stuff, custom history settings, etc. The big one that I want to zoom in on though, is the security level here. I want to disable certain web features that could be used to attack our security and anonymity. Uh, now the standard setting, which is currently by default and enabled, all Tor browser and website features are enabled. The safer option disables website features that are often dangerous, causing some sites to lose functionality. Now this talks about JavaScript or client side code that can run in your browser. Audio and video, HTML5 media are click to play, so they won't auto play. Some fonts and math symbols are disabled in case they do weird things. And there's the option, the safest, right? Only allow website features required for static sites and basic services. These changes affect images, media, and scripts. Now, the big one here is that JavaScript is disabled by default on all sites. So those attacks, those techniques like cross-site scripting or drive-by downloads, anything that might be put into JavaScript and that client-side code that will run in your browser, that won't execute, that won't run. And audio and video, HTML5 media, et cetera, are click to play rather than audio or autoplay. I am going to make sure that I'm working on the safest setting because I do not want JavaScript to go ahead and execute automatically when I'm browsing a site, uh, especially if I'm looking at some weird sketchy sites on the dark web, right? There's another option down here, deceptive content and dangerous software protection. Uh, there's an option to block dangerous and deceptive content. I'm not positive about this one. Uh, obvi obviously, yes, you might want to, um, but if it warns me about unwanted and common software, that's fine. Dangerous downloads are in here. Uh, deceptive and dangerous content, I don't exactly know. Um, for the sake of our performance and our show today, I'm going to leave that uh, 
unchecked, but you can totally decide what you're up for. Certificates and all that, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, not anything that we need to be super concerned about, but I wanted to make sure that I have, and you have, if you want to do this too, disable JavaScript on all websites. Super important in my mind. But now back to the point that I was making, how do we know where to go? How can we find some of the crazy stuff we might be looking for on the, the dark web? Uh, if we're accessing these Tor hidden services, how do we find them if they're hidden by default? But there are search engines like DuckDuckGo and Google. And are there any like Tor search engines or like dark web search engines? So I'm going to use DuckDuckGo to look around and see if there are actual things like this. Because this might be showcased on a ClearNet site or something that isn't behind the dark web. I'll zoom in on this here. And there are a lot of entries there's a uh, eight best dark web search engines for 2021. That's a good clickbait title, or yes, making it timely. List of the best dark web search engines, 10 best dark web search engines you need to check out now. <laughs> Some urgency there. So there are a lot that you could kind of poke through. And this is what I had done when I was getting started is that like, all right, I'm going to build up a list of sites that I know that I could use and refer back to. Because the thing is with a dot onion or Tor hidden service uh, domain, it's something that you're not easily going to be able to remember, right? The definition and the description and the, all those domain names is that they're very long and very random, whether it's a V2 or V3 address, which I believe V3 is the default now. We could dive into that later, but first, let's talk about some of these search engines. Now, this article breaks down on the surface web versus deep web versus dark web. Again, you guys know my stance on this. I think it's cheesy and dumbo. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like these names because they just sound so stupid, but I guess there's there's validity to that. DuckDuckGo, of course, coming in with number one here. Um, this is its onion address. So if I were to open up a new tab and just head over there, that should bring me to DuckDuckGo, that search engine here. Yep. Perfect loading up. Now, Torch is another big one. It's the Tor search engine. It claims to be the oldest search engine residing on the dark web, along with indexing over a billion pages, giving it considerable brownie points. Users are neither tracked, nor is there any censorship, allowing one to make full use of the information buried within the dark web. So if you're interested, I would tuck that one away, grab that address, be sure to use it. Um, now, when we load this page, there will be some potentially eyebrow raising stuff. Uh, we're going to slowly get into the things that might be a little bit questionable, a little bit weird, a little bit shady, especially as we explore some of these other search engines. Uh, so I will try to understand and know as, a, as before I get into the very exploratory, oh, what am I end up, gonna, what am I going to showcase? Uh, for now, uh, I, I want to take caution when we go to some sites because we're still getting our feet wet and we're still kind of learning the way around. Uh, Torch is taking a little bit of time to load. That's totally fine. We can uh, keep cruising. Recon is a, another one that we could end up using. Personally, I haven't used Recon all that much. This particular search engine was built by Hug Bunter, <laughs> prominent member of the popular Dread service on the dark web. And we could read a little bit more about that. They have a link there aims to serve as a database through users can search for products from different vendors on different marketplaces on the dark web. Okay, how's Torch doing? You still coming with us? Let's refresh this page a bit. Kind of take a little bit of time. I'll pause it and make sure that uh, this page will load so we can see it. Okay, I have waited a significant amount of time uh, and I have not gotten Torch or the Tor search to load for me at the moment. I have seen it load before, although occasionally, and I'm sure you'll run into this as well if you're kind of playing along, that uh, some websites just straight up don't end up loading for you. Uh, if I could try to go to this recon one, uh, that's not going to end up getting me anywhere either. I have found like a couple ones that I seem to consider reliable and that, okay, they seem to be functional and, and I can get to them. Uh, Amia is one that I tend to use and, and know now most of the time. Interesting part of Amia is that it lets you browse dark web links using a normal browser like Google Chrome. This is even though you would eventually need Tor to access those obtained links, but at least lets you see them this way. And it has a onion URL. So while this recon one is not loading for me, I'll try to go to Amia. And this seems to always load totally just fine for me. 
You can see Amio searches hidden services on the Tor network. To access these hidden services, you do need Tor. Abuse materials not allowed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, for a lot of the videos, and I think going forward, I will likely use Amia. Um, although I, I think there are some others that we could probably explore in these Google links here that we was, we were seeing. Not evil is another one that I've seen around. However, I have never been able to get this to actually load. At least the time that I've been going through this, that one just seems to be down. Like the page will load. Oh, hey, we're broken. But putting up an aura of simplicity, not evil is believed to have been modeled after Google. It also reported that it took its name from Google's model in back in the day of don't be evil. For searching, users have multiple options to collect the results from which are titles, URLs, or both of them combined, and that's a peculiar one. Candle, we'll grab this link, built just about three years ago, whenever this may have come, uh, where the design inspirations came for the site are obvious, Google, tending to imitate the kind of simplicity the tech giant has in the dark web, has yielded its good traffic with a number of sites indexed growing every day. Uh, Candle, again, I have not been able to get load. You can see that Recon, you can see that Torch, we can keep trying Torch in the Torch search, but uh, not evil, etc. These these are, are not coming to life for me. Haystack. Haystack I have seen actually function. Advertising itself has having indexed over 1.5 billion pages. It sure does deserve a place on the list. However, it should be noted that many of these may not work, considering only a small portion of the sites created on the dark web ever remain online, with most being wiped away. Now, I notice... You can check out Not Evil has failed to load. But if I were to go to Haystack, I have seen that one come back here for me. Haystack, your Darknet search engine. And if I were to look for something, I'll search for Hacker. I haven't been able to actually <laughs> see results come back just yet. Again, hey, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I would leave it up to you and kind of what we might be digging through, searching through these. Kilos is an interesting one. I have seen this load. I have gotten to access this. It asks you to fill out a little CAPTCHA, um, but it displays something that I should not show <laughs> here in a YouTube video, uh, a little bit of adult content uh, for a fun banner there. Kilos is one of the dark web search engines that's primarily been designed for the dark web. It launched in November 2019, provide cyber criminals a platform to find answers to their dark queries, search for services, and the right person to deal for all the wrong tasks. Uh, yeah, so that's that. That's all that this article showcases. I, I won't go to Kilos, but I want to let you know that that's a thing. Uh, again, I'll probably be working the most with Amia as I've seen that one be functional for me. Uh, there are other pages, right? The other links that we were able to click on when we search for this. This, I think, uh, had I enabled that content, it would just display a picture of some shady hacker fellas in a, in a hoodie and all. If you want to search the Darknet websites, there's must thing you must nick down. Forget about conventional browsers, excuse me, forget about conventional browsers, and most importantly, regular search engines. Right. So Amia kind of takes the cake at the top here. Uh, the uncensored hidden wiki. This looks like kind of a Wikipedia clone, but specific for onion sites and tour hidden services kind of crazy tour links i've seen and again even the hidden wiki these aren't strictly search engines but they'll redirect you to specific things poor for for specific services pertinent to what you might be looking for parasite i have not looked at parasite is a true darknet search engine this is just where you can sit down and explore landing unknown sites in the dark web that you're never going to access using conventional search engine. This might include sites that sell fake documents, Bitcoin, etc. This is the true end up darknet. Uh, now, they have a note here. This provides you with links along with data caches and hidden files that might not be uh, for the faint of heart. If you decide to use the search engine, make sure you've got a strong stomach and flexible moral. Or, yeah. Yeah, so I don't go to that one. <laughs> you don't need you don't need that one. Uh, Torch, of course, is up here. Uh, we can see if we can get that one to load one more time. Not evil. They do recommend. Um, Gbrew, DuckDuckGo, Haystack is in this list, etc. Candle and more, but peculiar, right? Interesting ones. <laughs> Look at these advertisements. You can uh, notice this page, this dark web link one looks. I think. 
almost similar to the first article that we saw and kind of the breakdown of the surface web, deep web, and dark web, etc. And then it lists out kind of all the previous ones that we've seen. So Amia, again, kind of reigns supreme as the one that I will end up using and we could use for future videos. Uh, it's sane and that it does, doesn't display anything immediately insensitive. Um, and it functions for us. So if I were to again search for hacker, while I hadn't gotten a result back in Haystack, I will see results from Amia. Now, a lot of these might not be <laughs> exactly what you're looking for, needless to say, uh, but it will still get you to some places. And there are a lot of duplicate entries that I end up seeing for things that I might not want. Uh, but going to these Onion sites, you can learn and see a little bit more. So this is kind of the vehicle and the vessel that I'll end up using. But look at some of this crazy stuff. Rent a hacker. Hire a hacker for every job you can imagine from DDoS to completely ruining people. That's spooky, right? More and more and more and more. This can go on and scroll through a lot. Although we'll get to some stuff that we might not even care about. We can check out what Deep Link is or the hacker community. And this is where we you know, fall off and fall down the rabbit hole. Check out Deep Link. Not things that I always want to end up showcasing. Hacker offers a link to WhatsApp hacking. You'll have full access to a victim's WhatsApp through software, blah, blah, blah. And you can look around. It's all about exploring. This was a peculiar one. The hacker community, the most advanced and trusted hackers of the dark net, here are some individual names, I guess their contractor, their score and availability. But look at this, hacking web servers, computers and smartphones, malware development for any operating system, social media hacking. And then you get to the, <laughs> change your grades in school and university, uh, break into Instagram, Facebook, and it just sounds so, uh, you, know, you know me, like I try to show the real and genuine stuff and that stuff just seems stupid to me and not realistic. Uh, that's why I put this out here with the preface, like, look, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't claim to say any of this is, is actually effective and, and uh, you should never want or have any association with this. So don't to begin with. Uh, but it just, it's crazy and unreal to see this like as a, as a marketplace. Uh, and we'll get into more and more, but I did want to drive you through how we can look for things inside of this onion sites, hidden services, and Tor, and take a look at some search engines that we might be able to use to find our way around and explore. But that's what we'll end up using. Amia will probably be my and what we could use for the rest of this videos and more series here to, uh, to hunt around and to dig through what we're going to be looking for. Cool. All right, that was a longer video than I kind of expected or wanted it to be, but I still hope that was an interesting showcase of there are seriously a, an archive and lists of, of potentially site potentially useful websites or tour.onion websites that you might use to look for more <laughs> .onion sites. And that's how we'll find those hidden services and explore more in this journey and dark web safari here. Um, I... I would recommend, and if, if you're going to be doing this for your own research, for your own learning and education, right? That's what this is all about. I've literally made a list of ones that I know are reliable and ones that I know will load for me. So I can use those as jumping off points to explore more and more. Maybe you could do the same. I don't know. Again, if this is something that you would like to be interested in. But I will not say it enough, cannot say it enough. This is all for educational sake and seeing what is out there, even if we're just like a passerby walking past it. I don't want to get to the, I don't want to get to the actual bad stuff and you should not either. Be safe and explore and learn. So we'll get to more good stuff in coming videos, but thanks so much for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Give me the feedback as to what you think of this series or what other things you'd like to see. I have a lot of interesting ideas, uh, but I, I'm trying to be safe about that line there. So thanks again, everybody. Please do those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, and subscribe. And I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Put this guy back on. <laughs> Take care, everybody.